Well gang, it's the winter season out here in Arizona. I woke up this morning and it was 58, 60 some degrees. It's too cold to work outside. I think the rest of the country understands. These are unbearable conditions. So when it's like that and I can't work on my projects that need some help, we organize. So I've been stuck inside watching YouTube videos on how to organize this garage and especially this unit. Been watching a bunch of toolbox tours, thought let's get one going on my toolbox. Maybe we'll bookmark where this bad boy left off at uh, the start of 2024. So this is after four years of owning this thing, three years, I'm sorry, three years of unit in it. This is fourth year of getting started. This is how I've got it arranged now for hopefully my best workflow and hold as many tools as I got. So let's just start up top. Got me a wide angle mirror, that's for parking. They were redoing the streets out here and I had to be able to pull a car in because we're not allowed to park out on the driveway. So my wife's car had to fit in here and all that stuff had to go over there. And I was, of course, just parking out on the main street, but this is what helped us get lined up. So I wasn't smashing into everything. Harbor Freight glove holder. Hey guys, could you make it fix, fit a box of gloves, huh? Maybe even the ones you guys sell? Uh, up here, I just keep my notebook. Spare jet ski reg. Uh, my notebook, just to keep track of what's going on in the progress, all kinds of notes that are going on. A first aid kit that's supposed to be easy to grab, but I put a bunch of stuff in front of it, so I knock all that down first. PPEs, fan because it does get toasty out here and, you know, stuff blowing in your eyes. Bowl of gloves, everybody's got one of those. My pen and pencil holder, keep some scissors, keep a paint marker, Sharpies, construction pencils, automatic pencils. Everybody's got to have the obligatory 10 mil kit. Seriously, every 10 mil you could ever use. I thought I'd have it just for decoration because it was cool. I use that. Guys, great idea. Everybody should make one. This toolbox came with an electrical outlet here on the side. I kind of use it just as main power. It's charging everything right now, but I run that light, that light, and that light off of it. So, you know, toolbox on, toolbox off. It also charges when the lights are on. And I've invested into the Ryobi batteries, so you'll see Ryobi equipment here, and I just leave a charger up top. You know. Start with the junk drawer. Everybody's toolbox has a junk drawer. Here's how I've arranged my junk drawer. Uh, more flashlights and our utility knife, spare lighters, flashlights, razor blades. Every shop, just, just get a lot of them. Go through them, throw them out. Fresh razor blades are the thing. My little magnetic picker uppers. Uh, alcohol swabs. Uh, a lot of what I do requires that level of cleanliness, so it's nice to keep some alcohol swabs on hand. This is an adapter I made to go from the three-quarter fitting down to a half inch so it fits in regular uh, fuel fill nozzles, like from the gas pump, so I can fill my truck or the motorcycle off of the gas cans. My pick assortment. These are just Home Depot picks, but my dad made me these. He buy screwdrivers at his local swap meet and turn them into little picks and pry bars. I need to get some more. Dad, those are amazing. Make me some more. Coming down, this will be my Allens. Uh, I've got the Husky T-handles. I don't, I don't like cushions T-handles. They take up too much space. Like I wish this arm was shorter most of the time. Uh, you know, those are a more useful tool, honestly, when you're using this arm. And these are okay, but they get in the way. So I don't use T-handles as much as I use these T-handles. And most of the time I'm just busting out a ratchet and using these. Air, I love air. So uh, tire repair, tire gauges, tire filler, just miscellaneous air things. Uh, T-tape, because I'm always changing fittings out. Various tire fillers, an air nozzle, spare tubes, uh, low PSI gauge. I had the matching high PSI gauge and broke it. Just for filling tires, more spare nozzles. Let's move up here. Measurements, precision, got a three eighths and a quarter inch torque wrench. I don't do anything that really needs the half inch torque wrench. These cover everything I need to do. I'll get the half inch someday. Uh, I did a little bit of lumber construction, so I kept some of those tools around, some T-squares. These are short levels. I actually use these at work for uh, computer monitors. This I took apart. I just needed this. Found this in some guy's old shed. And then my assortment of calipers. This is a dial caliper analog and it's SAE only. 
But this one's a digital and it does SAE and metric. I use that more. Calculator, little scale, tape measures. My electrical drawer, I, uh, I don't do a lot of AC or any ACs really, I can, but I mostly do DC stuff. So, uh, you know, your guitars, uh, I'll rewire your jet ski and maybe a car stereo. We'll stop there. But these are the tools that have aided my life. Just keep my little fittings in like a fishing style tackle box. The Harbor Freight heat shrink assortments are super nice. I got one multimeter, a few test leads. Uh, I'm trying these out, these are new this year. Harbor Freight came out with a couple different pliers. This is like an eight in one. Again, kind of more for like AC electricians, but we'll see how it comes in handy because it's also sort of a universal plier, like a snap-on. Same with this guy. So we'll uh, throw those into the road box this year and maybe put some use on them. One of my favorite drawers, porting tools. I do a lot of my own cylinder porting. Cylinder heads, jet ski cylinders. This is just the box for some of these tools. I'm not a box saver, but you know, under the first six months to a year of owning the tool, I like to hang on to it in case it's gotta go back for some reason. So here's a bigger, bigger die grinder. I only use that one uh, hogging out like aluminum cylinders, like getting a bunch of the meat out of the way. But most of my work is actually done with these little pencil grinders. That's an Astro 90 or 91 or whatever they called it. And then here's the Ingersoll straight grinder. This guy has a thousand hours on it already. And these are eighth inch arbors. This is a big quarter inch arbor. So not Dremel size, but close. And these also spin like 70,000 RPM. Here's some of the bits for those. I've got... 3M style buffing pads or like cross buffs, just the small guys. And then here's, again, all eighth inch stuff, but I do have some of my cartridge rolls in here. Uh, some stones, here's the arbors, not the arbors, the die. Uh, the sanding wheels, and then here's some more of the arbors for the quarter inch guys and some of those sanding drums. Why doesn't it all fit in the way it came out? And fixed. I definitely didn't take time to reorganize any of this. So just going back through, here's some of the eighth inch longer reach carbide bits, uh, standard carbide bits in eighth and quarter. And then just the ones I got working on, I keep my tools so I can change them out. Moving on down, oops, don't get ahead of ourselves. My favorite drawer, my favorite drawer. Do you see how I see the lights come on, by the way? Lights, isn't that classy? Looks like Vegas. Uh, got sockets arranged half inch on the left, three eighths on the right. I got these spiffy little organizers, so I keep my extensions and whatever will fit in them down there, and then the extensions that don't fit on the outside here. These don't get used a lot, you know. When am I really getting up there and changing the clutch in my own driveway? But I've got them. Some miscellaneous tools. These are jet ski specific. All these ones are here. That's a stud puller. And then I keep all the ratchets off to the side and then a quarter inch. Didn't fit up top, so quarter inch goes in here. I don't use 12 points, but I keep them around. They came in the kit, why not keep them? And then just an assortment of ratchets and breaker bars, uh, three eighths and half. The wrenches, metric up front, SAE in the back. I do have ratcheting wrenches, but I'm not really a wrench guy as I'm more of a socket and ratchet kind of guy. And lately I've been evolving into a power tool guy. So impact sockets have been my latest investment. I did get the stubbies. Stubbies are pretty useful. I think stubbies with a ratchet would be even more useful because when you're using these, you're, you know, so it'd be nice if it was, screwdriver drawer. That's the set of screwdrivers uh, ended up going in the road toolbox my dad had given me when I was a kid. That's the ones that didn't fit in there and that I don't use. It actually used to be the screwdriver set I had for this toolbox, but swapped them out for these guys because they're a little bit more complete set, a little bit heavier duty set. These are, what do they call them, impact screwdrivers. It's not like an impact screwdriver that actually re removes stubborn bolts, but the, although that's the idea with these, they're like chisels hardened steel. They're chisels that are shaped like screwdrivers. That's a Phillips one. And then scrapers and stuff. And I keep all my little tiny screwdrivers and whatnots and doodads down there. But 
plier drawer. Nothing really special about this. Uh, just been gathering whatever tools I usually need. More flush cuts. I think I have about four of these. I got some on Amazon, so I kind of sprinkled them throughout. I use these a lot, cutting uh, fuel line and cooling line and safety wire pliers. I use those an awful lot. Metal reforming, keep all my files, taps. That's a fine file set. I'll use that uh, cylinder porting when I really wanna get something straight. This is, I think it's, oh, okay, an old bit set from DeWalt. I don't use those bits anymore. But here's my pipe thread taps. Um, bits. I'll show you what I use those with later. And then just kind of an assortment of bits and driving bits, uh, more nut driver bits. Uh, this should be drill bits. Drill bits. Ryobi right, driver kit, all your screw driving bits, nut driver bits. hammers. I really enjoy hammers. And then the big pliers didn't fit anywhere else. Uh, I've got a dead blow. I really would like an assortment. Icon has a really nice assortment. I think I'll get into hammers. Uh, hammers are a useful tool. I also really like claw hammers. I swung a lot of them in my day. Here's a the death stick or dead on where I got it from. A 24. That bad boy has done a lot of work. And then here's the Vaughn California Framer. I think it's a 28. Not a lot of call for a framing hammer when you're jet skiing, but put some miles on some framing hammers in my day. We been in there yet? Yeah. This is my fastening one thing to another thing drawer. Packing tape, eight inch zip ties, 11 inch zip ties, 14 inch zip ties, four inch, or are they the six inch? Four inch. And I see safety wire, tape upon tape upon tape. Oh, that belongs to the wife. Velcro, padlocks, adhesives, Loctites, saran wrap, staples, rivets, Balin wire, staple gun, rivet tool, adhesives and sealants. Did I miss anything? Zip ties. Not yet. Everything that wouldn't fit. Um, I had to move all this over into this drawer. It came out of that drawer. I want to move it back someday, maybe. I got a cylinder hone, oil filter wrench, sandpaper, my crosscut saw, hack saws down there, electrician's tape, um, cordless work light. Here's my propane torch, 3M stuff. And then underneath the 3M stuff is all polishing stuff. And underneath the torches is my soldering station. And power tools. I invested heavily into the Ryobi system because it was the cheapest base model system you could get. Uh, package deal, 99 bucks, 99 bucks, and 50 bucks. That's pretty damn cheap, I think, to get five tools, three batteries, and two chargers. Whole purpose behind that, of course, every shop, every homeowner could really use a drill, and I've used the driver actually a lot more than I use the drill. Great homeowner tools, and they were super affordable. Came with two batteries and a charger, and they were $99, and they sent it to my door for free. <laughs> and then this, my whole intent, I didn't need this. I didn't think I needed the 3 eighths. Uh, I would have just wanted the half inch for like road emergencies, uh, working on stuff in the driveway, at work. You know, there's an opportunity to need an emergency bunch of tools. So I was, my intent was to get the half inch and with like a battery and a charger and it ended up being cheaper just to throw it in with the package and get this three eights in it. This ended up being the most useful shop one. I think this one out of all of these gets the most use. A three eights impact around the shop with a battery. You just find yourself like, oh, I need to do this, 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 and this. It's always available just to have a nice handy third hand that can undo all the bolts for you. Love having it because Air is, is nice, it's powerful, but it's also cumbersome to set up. You gotta have the hose with you, and by the time you're all set up, you might as well invest in using it. So air is one of those things, I, I don't use it until I need to use it, and electric's just quick, you know, start it up, turn it off, put it away. But in air tools here, we got pretty much everything in this drawer that I could need. This is my first half-inch impact my dad gave me. 
This is just a 90 degree die grinder. It came with my first air compressor. But let's see, let's go through this here. Here's my, oops, my half inch impact, and my three eighths impact. I worked for a short time at a motorcycle dealership and the mechanic I was training with used three eighths impacts for everything. And my dad always used half inch impacts for everything, worked on cars, right? And then dude who I was working with worked on motorcycles using three eighths and I just loved how handy and compact they were. They were powerful when you needed a powerful tool but they were just still useful like having a drill. They weren't abusive, they weren't hard on the wrists or the ears or even the air supply. It was a nice, handier impact to have around. I always wanted to get myself a 3 8 impact to augment the half-inch impact. And, and of course, these days, the compact half-inch impacts are getting to be more and more popular, so I found myself a half-inch impact in my toolbox. And then moving down the line, I've got Ingersoll, half inch and three eighths ratchets in two different sizes. These are their uh, nine, the 109 and 1099, uh, 90 foot pound torque. And then these are like 60 to 70 foot pounds of torque, but the speeds on them are different and the torque figures are different, obviously different motors, different heads, but they're uh, otherwise you can see same chassis, same chassis, just different uh, drive size, depending on what you're working on. And then I have a selection, a quarter inch, or oh, that's a three eighths here, a little mini three eighths blue point. I have a selection of quarter here. It's a real small one on kind of a miniature motor. And then this is a classic Mac uh, quarter inch ratchets. I'll again, working at the motorcycle dealership, you're working around small stuff all the time. I'd only ever use three eighths ratchets around my dad. You know, working on cars, you're taking a radiator out, you take the whole front end off with a three eighths ratchet. But then this was really handy on motorcycles, you know, little side covers or the gas tanks and you're not destroying fasteners. And plus you can use them with much smaller hardware. So came to really appreciate quarter inch ratchets myself. And then the last trick tool in my garage really doesn't show up on these toolbox tours a lot is the air compressor. My air compressor is not a lot to talk about, but I do a lot with it. These are Milton V style fittings, the high flows. I'm working on getting the most out of this Husky homeowner residential air compressor. She's just a 27 gallon. I went in here, it's post regulator. So it's still a regulated airflow, a uh, quarter inch into a Milton high flow fitting and then straight into the hose. I did want the hose to be removable for transporting the air compressor around. I didn't want that permanently mounted, but if the need ever arises for more airflow, I can come in here off of this fitting with a ball valve or something. Um, this tank wouldn't support half inch hose, but it would support higher flow fittings off of a 3 8 hose. So far though, my airflow needs aren't really that great. I don't run sanders. The biggest airflow demands I have will be my die grinders. And I'm not doing stuff like that that often. This hose supports it, these fittings support it just fine. But these are standard Milton M fittings. And if I wanna use auxiliary hoses, I still need Milton M fittings in the shop. So that's what is on this blue coil hose here. This is 25 foot, lets me get around the shop but that's a Milton V style fitting to fit all of my tools. This one is a short 10 foot coil with V style fitting. So it won't plug in here, but it'll plug into here. And this is my regulated setup for porting. So I have high pressure, high flow air coming in here, high pressure, high flow air able to come out of here, like out of that yellow guy. So if I need to, then I got high pressure air here and then regulated down to here. These are also Milton M fittings. I'm not sure if anybody noticed in the porting drawer, but these guys are still on M fittings. Only reason they're not Milton V fittings yet, these are like 13 bucks a piece to replace if you want the high flow stuff. So we'll get there. We just ain't made of money. So there it is, a brief introduction to the 2024 setup on my toolbox. Let's see how the workflow works this year and what I end up accomplishing.